So now we're groveling in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I don't know how else you want to talk about it. You got the president effectively going hat in hand over to Saudi Arabia to plead for oil. Because if he doesn't get any oil, the Democrats' chances this fall and certainly in 2024, well, they're pretty much zero. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Trish Regan Show. I am Trish. Good to have you here. Reminder, make sure you subscribe to the full audio version of this podcast on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, and make sure you watch the entire video. You can get that there at YouTube, so subscribe if you're watching there on Rumble or on Facebook. It's really important. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, share, do all those good things for me. I, I also want to point out that portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now, so go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. We're going to talk a little bit more about commodities coming up later in the program. <laughs> but first, the sort of uh, shamefulness of the U.S. president having to beg for oil in Saudi Arabia. I mean, look, it, this was so miscalculated on every single level. I think that's the bottom line here because he ought to have known Biden should have, uh, and our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and a whole bunch of other people there that are advising him, they ought to have known that while Saudi relations might be a little bit precarious and delicate and challenging, they're a pretty big source of oil. So before you decide to cut off all U.S. oil and then get yourself involved in an international situation, which, by the way, I'd argue we didn't have a choice on, I, I, I'm okay with that, but you should be actually thinking it through, right? Like this is a game of chess. And in that game of chess, there are, there are moves that need to be made. Like you need to sort of premeditate and think through what's the implication of not having any oil back here at home. Well, I'll tell you what the implication is. You guys are all going to get voted out of power. And that's a good thing. But in the meantime, we're all stuck with gas prices like we've never seen, food prices like we've never seen, rents like we've never seen, inflation like we haven't seen in 41 years. And so that's the immediate effect of poor policy choices. And then there's, of course, the complicating issue of, you know, how do you deal with the Saudis and some other things that have happened? Don't forget the Democrats were really aggressive in terms of how they how they regarded our relationship with Saudi Arabia. Frankly, it seemed in many cases like they just didn't value it. And while it may be complicated, you also kind of need to understand the relevance of certain countries. And instead, they, they refused to do that. And they really attacked the Trump administration and Saudi Arabia because of the, the tragedy that had unfolded with Khashoggi. And uh, I, I don't dispute that that was, in their case, appropriate. But now they're stuck having to completely backpedal. Here is the president over in Israel getting asked by a reporter about how he was going to address that with MBS. Watch. What will you say to Saudi leaders, specifically to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, about the Khashoggi murder and other human rights practices? Ah, okay. So uh, I, I don't really think he quite had an answer for that. His response was, well, I've always been very outspoken on human rights. I mean, I, I guess when it serves him, because if you really wanted to be outspoken on human rights, you know, you might try and be a little bit more consistent and maybe call out China with some of their violations on human rights anyway. Um, he, he gave sort of a weak answer there and then doubled down on the reasons why he was going to Saudi Arabia. Don't forget, a lot of Democrats didn't want him to go in the first place, but he says it's important. Take a listen to this. Uh, my views on Khashoggi have made been absolutely positively clear. Um, and I have never been quiet about talking about human rights. The question that I'm, the reason I'm going to Saudi Arabia, though, is much broader, is to promote U.S. interest, promote U.S. interest in a way that uh, I think we have an opportunity to uh, reassert what I think we've made a mistake of walking away from, 
our influence in the Middle East. Okay, okay, all right. Um, so <laughs> we're going there because it's in the interest of the United States of America. I'm a big believer in doing whatever needs to be done for the interest of the United States of America. I am a patriot in that sense. And I think that part of the problem with this administration, frankly, is that they haven't been putting America first enough. So if it means going to Saudi Arabia and shaking hands because it's in, in the interest of America, okay, I get it. Why couldn't you thought of this first? Okay, guys, I mean, like, why not? Why stand around and criticize when you ought to be coming up with solutions and you ought to be sort of real politic in that sense, in that you need oil. So here's another idea. Why wouldn't you think about having oil back here at home? Why wouldn't you think about going to Texas and doing everything you can to open up those refineries? Because that is in the interest of the United States of America. It's kind of mind boggling. And we know the reasons why. We know the reasons why. And I say this with no prejudice against any green energy initiative. I think they're wonderful. And I'm all about getting as much energy as we can, right? In the interest of being energy independent, which we were which we were actually under Bush and then again under Donald Trump. But that, those days are over right now. Those days are over and we are, we are stuck in a, in a real difficult situation where energy prices will continue to escalate because there's just not enough of this commodity around. I mean, that, that's the reality and you've got so much inflation. So instead of going to Texas, by the way, the refineries down there and the oil companies, they've all invited him, publicly invited him to come and tour the facilities and be a little bit more rah-rah U.S. energy. And he's been reluctant, you see, because there are political pressures. But to heck with the political pressures, buddy. I mean, the political pressures ought to be telling you that you got to come up with a solution. You got to fix this thing. You got to fix this thing because otherwise you and your whole team are going to be out in a very short amount of time. Just look at the, the approval rating numbers. I mean, Gallup's got one at, I think, 37%. There's another poll out, 33%. He's doing quite poorly. In fact, more poorly than any other president at this point in the cycle. And that's completely understandable. It's completely logical, given where the economy is and given where inflation is and given where that's all heading. So it, it's frustrating, I think, as a bystander, right, for all of us to watch this play out because a lot of it was preventable and still is. And so good, good. Go make nice with Saudi Arabia. Do what you need to do. But simultaneously, would you do us a favor? Would you try to make nice with the Texas oil companies and in Oklahoma and in all these other great parts of the United States of America where we have all this energy right here? We just need a little bit more um encouragement. I'll use that word. I mean, investors get spooked when they hear the administration talking so aggressively against traditional energy, they get really spooked. And so people pull their money out of it. It's logical, right? Who the heck wants to be in a business where you're worried that the government's going to shut you down any day, anyhow, you know, any time. And so th there's been a withdrawal of capital. And yet this is a commodity that is very much in need because we haven't fully gone through this transition, the transition that they all want to happen. It hasn't happened yet. So we still need this stuff. And now we're stuck, hat in hand, begging Saudi Arabia, despite our issues, et cetera, with the country. Again, just think about priorities. Put your own nation first. Think through how people are affected because they are really, really affected by this inflation. It's one reason why I keep saying to people, you know what, you gotta prepare, you gotta be ready for challenging times ahead because I don't think the inflation is gonna turn around overnight. In fact, I think we're stuck with this for some time. And not only are we stuck with the inflation, we're also stuck with a Federal Reserve that is gonna have no choice but to keep upping rates. They did 75 basis points before, I think they're gonna do 75 basis points again. One way to help mitigate some of this inflation over the long term, as you think about your retirement, is to protect your dollars, to make sure that you somehow have some inflation protection built into your portfolio. It's one of the reasons why I like commodities, including things like gold, like silver, like oil, by the way, as well. Though we'll see oil prices have come down amid all these recession fears. I do think the overall trajectory, however, is up for oil as well. But back to gold. 
because that's what I want to talk to you about specifically when it comes to one of our sponsors, Legacy Precious Metals, who you heard me mention before. The guys are good friends of mine and they run a wonderful business where they can help you figure out how much gold you may need in your portfolio, depending on your risk tolerance, as well as how you can have a, a gold-backed IRA that will help you keep pace with inflation. Really, really important to do because you know what those dollars, they're just not going to be able to buy as much in the future. I mean, maybe in another country, I will give you this, the US dollar is looking increasingly strong in places like Europe, good spot to go on vacation if you can handle the plane fares. But um, the, the dollar is doing better internationally. But if you want to continue living in this country, if you want to continue living in your home and being able to have an enjoyable life in the future, then guess what? You need some inflation protection. So again, this is where Legacy Precious Metals comes in. Give them a ring today. Their number is 1-866-589-0560. one 589 one LegacyPMInvestments.com is their website. Oil is, is one of those things, as we look at it, just barely under $100 a barrel right now that I think long-term, as long as we are in this challenging global situation, we will continue to see escalation in prices. Now, if the, the whole world shuts down as it did in 2020, then it's a whole other ballgame, right? By the way, smart move. The Trump administration actually bought oil at $10 a gallon, $10 a barrel, forgive me, $10 a barrel. I mean, hey, we may be at $10 a gallon, right? In the gas prices these days. We're uh, near that in some parts of the country. Anyway, they bought it at $10 a barrel. Pretty awesome move because at the time, the Democrats were, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how could Trump do this? He's just giving out a big handout to all his energy friends. And I'm like, Hey guys, I mean, that's exactly when you want to buy it, right? You buy low, sell high, and then there's Biden having to give out our strategic reserves for oil when it's upwards of $100 a barrel. I mean, he, he started doing this when we were at like 115. It's a like, good thing we had that $10 barrel, right? $10 oil, thank goodness. It's up to 115 and then we're handing it out. Of course, there's, there's a lot of questions as to, as to where all that oil actually went right? <laughs> um, oil is a global commodity. I've explained that before. In fact, if you want to know more about that, go check out The Oil Conundrum because that the podcast, The Oil Conundrum, uh, about a month ago, I, I dove into this. It is a global commodity and very challenging, therefore, to quote unquote disguise. And this makes it complex and difficult for the administration and complex and difficult when it comes to sanctions you, you hear the president and Janet Yellen talking about how they need to limit the price that Russia can get for its oil. Okay, good luck. I mean, you can try it. I, I think it's worth a shot. But ultimately, what their sanctions may have the effect of doing is actually raising the price of oil overall while not really, not really penalizing those that you want to penalize to the extent that you'd like to. Okay, it's a very challenging thing to do. But anyway, here we got the SPR and it's getting released and in some cases going to the wrong places or the wrong people. But thank goodness we had the SPR. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable, to, unbelievable to me just how misguided all of this has been from the very, very beginning. And I think what we've learned here is that the president is not a very good leader and he does not have people around him that fundamentally understand some of the most important issues that are affecting this nation and our people. And, you know, social stuff aside, because that's a whole other issue, and we, we can talk for days about that, just from sort of an economic policy standpoint, they're very, very lost. And being so lost, they've caused a lot of harm and a lot of unnecessary challenges for the American people. And that's what's so discouraging about it. Quick reminder, go sign up for my newsletter, trishintel.com. That's my website, trishintel.com. Do that for me. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this podcast. I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everyone. But think about these things. Think about why it is, why it is, and we don't have to get too conspiracy theory on this, but I wonder why nobody can sort of put one foot in front of the other and think about how this is all going to affect the American people. Yes, I know you want the green energy, but you know what? You don't have it right now. And it's not fair to the Americans on this planet right now, 
on earth, in this country, that you're going to make them pay the price. Think about that. I'd like to know your take on it. Let me know in the notes below. I read them, so make sure you uh, include your thoughts. And we'll reconvene on Monday. Have a great, terrific weekend.